Hello YouTube, this is Frank from Architecture Aesthetics. Today in this video, I would like to present to you a proposal for a side project I had been working on. Although the design wasn't adopted in the end, I feel I've learned a lot from the design process and would like to share it with you guys. A few words regarding the context of the project. The objective is to design a meditation camp in the rural area of Latvia from where foreign visitors can come and explore their spiritualities and engage in ecotourism. With that said, let me walk you through my four presentation panels. The first panel consists of a main perspective render, a massing diagram, a site map, and two elevation drawings. The general part of this project is informed by Latvia's abundance of natural wood resources, the owner's request to preserve the existing masonry walls for a barn, and the call for a cost-effective design specified in the brief. Stemming from these three pieces of information, I envisioned the meditation camp consisted of two formally similar structures connected by a water pound. The main structures are going to take the form of traditional A-frame houses. And as you can see from the massing diagram, the shape of the roofs are resulted from manipulating the form of the existing barn, demonstrated by the red arrows. The two main structures are going to be dedicated as activity and living quarters respectfully. On the left is the activity quarter labeled in red, with a dining hall, a yoga room, and a meditation room, which is labeled in dark blue. On the right is the living quarter, which has three levels, with the owner and the guests living on the first two levels and an indoor farm on the top level. We're going to talk more about the programs in the second panel. Connecting the two structures is the water pound. The pound draws its water source from a nearby river, and the pound not only adds to the aesthetic qualities of the camp, its reserve is also going to be pumped to the buildings to flush the toilets. Moreover, the soil excavated from the pound is going to be used as insulation in the exterior walls, and more on the eco-friendly design practices on the fourth panel. Now here's a side map of the proposal. As you can see, coming from the main road, a driveway leads you to the campsite, which is surrounded by greeneries with gravel walkways and a bridge for you to get close to the nature. And overall, this is a great site for meditation and for one to explore his, uh, his or her spirituality. And here are two 1 to 250 scale elevation drawings communicating the material of the exterior walls, uh, the shape of the roofs, and the scale of the main structures. The purpose of my second panel is to discuss the structural aspect of the proposal and explain the programs. Therefore, the most prominent drawing on this panel is the exploded axonometric drawing, which explains the structural logic with small drawings explaining details such as how are the wooden frames attached to the wall and how are the frames connected to the ground. The right-hand side of the panel mainly concerns itself with the programs. Starting off is the floor plan of the first level. In the activity quarter, we have two receptions, one by the main entrance, one in the dining hall, a kitchen and two bathrooms. The first floor at the living quarter is divided into owner and guest areas. In the owner's area, we have a side entrance, laundry room, public bathroom, and a library slash living room. Then we have a master bedroom, a kid's bedroom with a shared bathroom, uh, a kitchen, and a dining room. Over on the guest side, we have two shower areas, each connected to a sauna, and on the other side of the corridor are three storage rooms. Uh, up on the second floor, in the activity quarter, we have a large yoga room and a meditation room with desks for quiet reading purposes positioned in the corners. The entire second floor in the living quarter is dedicated to the guests. We have two four-people rooms, four double rooms, and four single rooms, which comes to a total of 20 people capacity. What is not shown in the plans is, of course, the rooftop indoor farm, which can be accessed by the rear stairwell. The stairwell also functions as an emergency exit for fire hazards. Below the plan drawings, we have two 1 to 200 scale section drawings. The cross section emphasizes on the meditation room, which we'll discuss more in the third panel, and the longitudinal section looks at the interior of the living quarters. 
The purpose of the third panel is to give a more comprehensive depiction of the activity quarter, especially the meditation room, which is arguably the most important aspect of the camp. On the left hand side, we start off with an interior shot in the kitchen of the activity quarter looking at the meditation room. Below the shot, we have an interior rendering and a construction diagram of the meditation room. On the right hand side, we have an axonometric section drawing detailing the program of the activity quarter. The purpose of the fourth panel is to discuss the eco-friendly features utilized in this proposal, which are categorized into three sections. From a construction standpoint, this proposal strives for eco-friendliness by elevating the building off the ground, using load-bearing frames to minimize footprint. Secondly, as we have discussed before, the reserve in the central water pound is used for toilet flushing, and the soil excavated from the pound is stuffed into the exterior walls as insulation. This practice is inspired by a YouTube video explaining a novel wall type made of Lego piece-like modules that can be put together by hand without using nails or glues. I found this idea to be very clever and will be linking this video as an annotation as well as in the description box. Lastly, I propose the project to be heated with geothermal heating system, which in short is to drill pipes deep into the ground to a level where the temperature is desirable and constant, and use the thermal circulation in the pipes to either cool down or heat up the building. The goal is to use this heating system along with solar panels and drinking wells to make the project truly self-sufficient. Alright guys, that wraps up today's video. I hope you found it informative, and I'll be posting all the graphics of this project on my blog and put the link in the description box. With that said, I'll see all of you in next week's video. Bye bye.